It's a great pleasure to be here. Minister, we were forced to come here by our provost. It wasn't by free will. <laughs> and I'm going to pop your eyes out now with this story. But it's great to be here. Wonderful to showcase what we're doing. Of course, Trinity, no finer university could you showcase. Uh, we've got Samuel Beckett, as the provost mentioned. I love Beckett. Uh, he wrote a play called Waiting for Godot, in which nothing happened twice, is the famous line. Beckett. <laughs> But secondly, uh, I'd like to mention Erwin Schrodinger briefly. He gave a lecture in 1943 in Trinity called What is Life? This is the start of DNA and the big molecular biology revolution. And all those heroes of that era look to that lecture and say it happened in Trinity. It's wonderful we had that happen in our university. And in my opinion, uh, the discovery of DNA and all that wonderful molecular stuff is the biggest and most successful endeavor of humanity in the 20th century. I really believe that because it, we understand how life works. Uh, new medicines are emerging from all this. and It's a wonderful thing. And of course, the story I'm going to tell you tonight is one particular research story from my own lab. It's a medical research story. And I'm going to weave together three strands for you. First of all, what the discovery is. Secondly, the student who did it, and it was one of our own students. Rebecca Cole was the first author on the paper. She did all the work, not me, as her supervisor. Um, and then thirdly, how we're commercializing it, because it's very important if you discover something useful. Can you make it into something? And we're very keen now to develop this for what I guess is a new medicine. And the area I work in is inflammation. And I would say that um, the great pleasure of working in a university like Trinity, or many universities, is purpose. We all hopefully have a purpose. And to have a purpose, you've got to love what you do, which I do, luckily. You've got to be good at it, which I'm kind of good at, I suppose. They still pay my wages. Um, but thirdly, society needs to need it. And I think all the stories you'll hear tonight are examples of work which society will benefit. And my one is, is medical research. And I'm going to tell you about inflammation. And this slide here is a rheumatoid arthritis hand. That poor patient is suffering from rheumatoid. And I've worked on this area for 30 years now, trying to uncover the nuts and bolts and the pathways and the complexities of that disease. And in fact, in Trinity, again, we have a legacy here. I know we're going to start boring you now with this, but in 1900, we had a great graduate called Almuth Wright, who did two degrees simultaneously in Trinity and got a gold medal in both. He did medicine and classical studies. Now imagine a, a medical student today doing two degrees back to back like that. Uh, he then decides to leave classical studies, it's boring, and does medicine, goes to St. Mary's Hospital in London. His first student is Alexander Fleming, amazingly, who discovers antibiotics. But Wright worked on macrophages, and that's the cell type I work on mainly. These are white blood cells that engulf bacteria and take them up and then mount the immune response. And Wright discovered that bacteria have to be coated in something in blood for the white blood cell to engulf them. And he coined a term for this, opsoni. And opsoni is the Greek to prepare food. So he was using his classical, wonderful trinity, classical education there to come up with a fancy name. Uh, I'm back to opsoni a bit later. And he was like one of the founding fathers, I guess. And many of us have always believed the macrophage is key for all these diseases. And can we discover a key pathway in the macrophage that might explain horrible diseases? When this system goes wrong, you get things like arthritis, you get MS, you get colitis, you get things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. All of these are dysfunctional inflammation, where the macrophage goes a bit rogue and begins to go a bit crazy. And I've always figured if we can find a master switch for that process, can we discover a key thing happening inside the macrophage? We could make a drug then that might block that. And a protein called NLRP3, these names get really horrible, turns out to be a key switch in the macrophage. And it's been shown to be involved in all these different diseases. And in fact, tonight we've got Doug Gollenbach here, I'll point to him. He's in UMass, one of our collaborators. He found NLRP3 as key in Alzheimer's disease, for instance. And in Alzheimer's, the macrophage tries to take up this horrible plaque in your brain and gets really irritated. And NLRP3 senses that plaque and goes crazy and causes disease. So we wondered, could we find a drug to block NLRP3. And lo and behold, Pfizer, the drug company not far from here, had a drug that they'd left on the shelf, amazingly. We dusted that down, and it turns out to be a very specific NLRP3 inhibitor. It blocks that switch, if you like. And it works in lots of different models of inflammation. So it's working in things like a model of MS, for instance. It works in sepsis. And we're very excited now to take this drug forward and see if it will treat all these diseases. So it's almost like as if we found maybe a magic bullet that corrects this strange NLRP3 switch that goes wrong. And we're very excited about this because it's got huge potential. Now, the student who did that was, um, had done biochemistry in Trinity and then, luckily enough, did a PhD with me. Uh, Rebecca calls her name. And I lectured her in first year. She came in and did uh, biology initially. And I love lecturing. And I give the first 12 lectures in biology they get from me, terrifyingly, those first years. And I tell them something very simple on their very first lecture. I say, there's two degrees worth getting here. 
a first or a third? And we all kind of, what's this? I say a first means you're a bit of a genius. It's quite good, you know. A two-one means you're a trier, and you shouldn't really have bothered. You know? uh, a two-two means you're a waster anyway. And a third means you had a damn good time. So, so they, they are the two degrees worth getting. And luckily, Rebecca got a first, though, and came into my lab and made this wonderful discovery. And it's a great example, I guess, of a, a Trinity story. Now, the third bit, then, how do you make this useful? How do you turn that discovery into something that humanity might benefit from? Well, luckily enough, in 2004, we founded a, a brand new company, which we called Opsona, after Opsonization, of course, to keep the Trinity link. We've raised $55 million so far, Opsona, amazingly, to develop new anti-inflammatory medicines. And our very first medicine, it's not now three at the moment, it's a different one, it's before that, is now in clinical trials for a kidney transplant and a type of leukemia called MDS, or myelodysplastic syndrome. And a big thrill for me was our ninth patient was given the drug last week for MDS. That's a collaboration with the MD Anderson in Houston, and they ring us up when a new patient is recruited. And to think that the company I'm involved in is now treating patients with a brand new medicine. And of course, the trial will run until December, and who knows, we may get a result there. Secondly, in the case of um, the kidney transplant, we're having 150 patients are being treated with our, our drug that to suppress the inflammation that happens during um, a kidney transplant. And of course, that's the biggest thrill of all. Now remember, if you're a scientist, your number one joy is discovery, that's all. Just you want to discover brand new things, and that's quite satisfying if you discover a brand new thing. And in Trinity, many labs, every day almost, are discovering brand new bits of information. You know, nature is revealing some secret in all these labs. It's wonderful. You know, if you're a scientist, that's really what turns you on. But imagine if that discovery then makes a difference, and makes a difference to patients. I think that's the biggest thrill of all, especially for our, our students, our postdocs, and especially for me. So thanks very much.